Today is June 2nd, 2017. It is day 134 in the Donald Trump White House regime. Today we are going to be discussing the number 7, the number 11. How important are these numbers to the Illuminati? And have you heard of the Kim Clement prophecy that in 2007, Kim Clement prophesied, he predicted that Donald Trump would win the election and he would walk into the White House. Today we are going to discuss how and why the Illuminati, the people in charge, the dual citizens, why do they use evangelicals? Why do they bring the Christians into their fold? Well, it's easy. The dual citizens are a very small, small, tiny group of people. I mean, they are like point zero 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 one of the population. They're nobody. They're nothing when it comes to numbers. They need our help. So they go for the easiest, weakest link to help them. That would be the N evangelicals, the Bible thumpers. Because the Bible thumpers know that the Bible comes from their tribe. So since they are the chosen people, it's easy for the chosen people to take advantage of the evangelicals. So I never truly understood why the Bible thumping evangelicals stayed with Donald Trump after day 77 when it was clear on day 77 when Donald Trump bombed Syria that he was with the Illuminati, that he was a fake. I never truly understood why the evangelicals stayed with him, and they're still with him. But this kind of explains it all to me, because they are so enamored with the prophecy that Kim Clement prophesied that the Trump, the trumpet, would walk onto the throne and I believe that the good Christians of America are being played, they're being taken advantage of, they're being exploited. But who would have the power to exploit these Christians? Who would want to? Well, that's what we're going to dive into today. And you did notice that on, they pick certain days. Like on day 77 was the day that they sent the missiles off. First, they said there was 60 missiles, and then there was 59, but we all know there was 66 missiles attempted. Sure, they don't all go where they're supposed to go, but it's all about the numbers with these people. We know that Jared Kushner was behind it. He's been exposed. So we're going to start with Jared Kushner. Jared Kushner is neck deep into this stuff. We've talked about it before. It's Kabbalah thing. It's Kabbalah stuff. It's They are a supremacist. That's probably the first thing we need to get out of the way. That they are a supremacist group. They believe that they are better than you and I. That we are nothing more than slaves for them. Oh, they don't like to talk about it out in public. But it's the truth. We are trash. They believe that they are the chosen people, and we are trash. What I find so troubling is they, they have actually trained, bullshitted, and brainwashed all the Christians out there to believe this to be a fact, that they are the chosen people. What a joke. It really is a joke. But this is probably new information for a lot of people. Right before Donald Trump was elected, on 6 p.m., of the 6th of November, 2016, Jared Kushner went to visit the rabbi's grave. You see, they put so much into the numbers. And you're probably wondering at this point in time, what the hell am I talking about and where am I going with this? You see, what I want to talk about, my conversation is, again, who has the power to pick Donald Trump years in advance, to win the election. Who and who are these people and why do they worship numbers? It's clear. They don't deny it. Here's the thing. They do not deny that they worship numbers, that, they fail, that there's so much 
power into the mystical numbers. They do not deny this. Okay, so before we go any farther, let's clarify something. Let's try to make this believable, okay? Because a lot of people might say it's all a bunch of hogwash and it's not even believable. But think of it this way. If you believe in something strong enough, there is an unbelievable amount of power there that we have not truly come to understand or even tapped into. You've heard about it, the power of belief. We know about it. We've heard about it, but we don't really truly understand the power of belief. Many people say it's a good idea not to go to the doctor and get that bad news because once you get that bad news and it's in your mind, you can't get it out. I always thought that was a fact. My, my, my old man was doing fine until he went to the doctor and the doctor told him, oh yes, you got it. You only got a certain amount of time to live and it destroyed him. It was the power of belief. Had he not gone to the doctor and he, and he had a belief in this is going to help me, whether it be belief in God or belief in a diet, he probably would have lasted 10 years longer. That's what I believe. Okay, so let's say you do believe in a higher power then. Let's go a different direction. We've talked about, you know, the power of belief, but let's say you do believe in a higher power. Let's say like the, the God of the Gentiles. And you live in this evil regime where they lock up just about anybody. They're locking up all kind of our, our brothers and sisters, your family members. They lock you up, whether you hurt anybody or not. They're locking you up. They even lock up your children for self-medicating for the pain they bear because there's no jobs, there's no hope, there's no future. So we live in tyranny, right? We live in tyranny. We live under a tyrannical regime. So we can take this one step further. If you do believe in a God, then maybe the answer is a collapse is needed. The only thing that would help us under this tyrannical government that has so much power and they have such a big army and we have no hope is a total collapse in the regime. What better way would God do that? If there was a higher power and he wanted this regime to collapse, what better way would God convince you to lose faith, to lose faith in the regime, to lose confidence in the current regime than to put a man like Donald Trump in office? Maybe there's a higher power. So I'm not trying to say that it's totally in the hands of these dual citizens and their Kabbalah numbers. Maybe I'm going to give another option to the people who have a higher power. Maybe God planned it all out. We ca I cannot rule that out, that there's a higher power, there's a God that sort of planned this out. And for some reason, he wanted Donald Trump in there, maybe to collapse the regime quicker. I mean, because you got Donald Trump who hires people like Sessions, and Sessions is involved in the for-profit prisons, and he's thinking of ways to put more of your children, more of your grandchildren in jail so his for-profit prisons can make money. So you're talking about an evil regime of tyranny. You cannot rule out the fact that maybe there's a higher power, maybe there's a God who put Donald Trump in there so the regime collapses quicker. So that's just one theory. Let's get back to the Kabbalah, the numbers, because that has, you, you have to have faith in a God. Now I want to go to something concrete, something I can actually put my fingers across, get my head around it, and that would be Jared Kushner and his Kabbalah rabbis. Do they have the power? Did these dual citizens, these Illuminati, did they have the power to set this up seven, eleven years earlier, that would tie in to the prediction that the evangelical prophet, he prophesied that Trump was coming. Maybe he was in on it. Maybe the people in Israel gave him that information and he ran with it. Because, you know, preachers have been known to go from town to town making money, you know. Okay, but I don't want to be cynical about the good Christian man. You know, he just passed away, what, approximately two weeks after Donald Trump was elected. So he was able, he was actually able to see his prophecy come true. And then about 15 days after Donald Trump was elected, he passed on. 
as we said before, his name is Kim Clement. But we have to think about this in a scientific way. We have to face reality that the only true prophets come from God and they're never ever wrong. Now, I don't know all of Kim Clement's predictions. I mean, this is one that came true. But even the Bible will tell you that the true prophets from God, they're never wrong on anything. Is Kim Clement that prophet? I don't know. What I do know about these people who have foresight into the future is they all have some things in common. They all seem to have dived into the bottom, the bottom of hell. Like Kim here, he he had a rough early life in drugs, heroin, but somehow they're able to pull themselves up by the bootstraps, make themselves better, reach for a higher power, and then I guess because their life was so difficult in some part of their life that they see they have this foresight, they can see things. Well, that's one theory. The other theory is that the Illuminati, the dual citizens, they planned this out years in advance. And this would be proof, wouldn't it? If Kim Clement was going from town to town preaching that Trump was going to be the president, he was doing this, we know, in 2007. There's a possibility that he was given inside information from the dual citizens, from the people who studied the Kabbalah, and we're going to get into them, and if they studied the Kabbalah and they picked, my theory is, they picked Donald Trump because of the number 777. Yeah, that's my theory. I believe that these people study the Kabbalah, they study the numbers, that's why they chose day 77. They thought day 77 of the Donald Trump regime, that would be the lucky day to bomb Syria. We know why they want to level Syria. You know that, because they want to keep control of Golan Heights. But they, pick, they, they use their numbers. They have total belief in these numbers. Remember what I said earlier. If you have a total belief in something, then you can actually make things come true. We haven't even tapped into this power. We don't have time in this video to go over the power of belief. But trust me, if enough people believe in something, you can make it happen through the power of belief. We'll learn about that probably thousands of years in the future. We're not there yet. But these people have a total, total, unconditional belief in numbers. And I believe they picked Donald Trump because of 777. We'll get into that here in a moment. And I realize by this point I've lost a lot of people. Lost, they, they, you know, they're just, they think I'm crazy. We're talking about numbers and mystical numbers. They, people just don't believe it. But let's go into some of these numbers a little and see why would they pick Donald Trump. On his first full day in office, Donald Trump was 70 years old, 7 months and 7 days old. Now remember, 777 is a very, very powerful number in their Kabbalah religion. That's why I say, and they, you know, and they're also working with artificial intelligence computers. They're no longer just in a room. They used to be in a little room and they would study from sun up to sun down these numbers, but now they have computers to help them. I believe that they've run the numbers through the computer. And this is also interesting, too, that Donald Trump was part of the Reform Party, the Democratic Party, the Independent Party, the Republican Party. Donald Trump will just say or do anything to get your approval. You notice that when he goes to places like Saudi Arabia, Israel. Most of the time he will say or do anything. He'll bow his head for approval. He just wants your approval. He just wants people to like him. So he's actually bought into it. I believe that Donald Trump may be so gullible that he's actually bought into this theory where he was prophesied to be the chosen one. Donald Trump might actually believe that. You know Donald Trump has heard this prophecy from Kim Clement. He might actually be gullible enough to, to believe it's a real prophecy when in fact it was Jared Kushner and his Rabbi Pinto, 
and some people even above them like BB, and we're talking about people you don't even know, their names are unknown. These people may have engineered the whole thing just because they ran the numbers through the computer and Donald Trump's number come up 777, almost like going to the casino, hitting a jackpot. These people are crazy. Now, up to this point, I have no idea if any of this sounds believable to you or not. I know it to be a fact. I know it to be true because I know how these people think. But let me just go a little bit further. What now, I guess, what I need to convince you of is that they believe it. It doesn't matter if you believe it. It matters if they believe it because, remember, they're in control of the Federal Reserve banking cartel. They're in control of your money. Okay, this is interesting. This all happened during the year 5777 of the Hebrew calendar. So let's dig into this, because like I say, it doesn't matter whether you believe it, it matters if they believe it because they control the money in your pocket. Remember, look at that dollar bill. It's not a dollar bill, it's a Federal Reserve note, and they control it. And they believe this 777, the number 7 and 11, is so powerful in their religion, in their Kabbalah, and... Again, we don't have time to dive into this, but this goes so deep into all the false flags. Remember the false flags. Remember Flight 77 hit, you know what? Remember Flight 175 hit Floor 77. Remember the Mumbai. I mean, these, if you don't believe that they think of 7-Eleven as a very powerful number. If you don't believe that, then well, you need to do a little bit more investigation because it is right there in your face. They're not hiding it. Anytime they pull this dog shit, anytime they pull this horse shit, they're doing it tied in with the, the number 7-7 seven, seven and number 11 because they believe they're going to get away with it. It's lucky. I'll say it for the last time. Donald Trump shooting the fireworks off on day 77. He lost his entire base that had a brain. Anybody who had a brain, he lost, them. he lost them completely. The only people still with Donald Trump is the evangelical Bible thumpers who believe in his prophecy. It's okay. Let's go in to who is advising these people because they are Sephardic rabbis. They studied the Kabbalah. One of them was even put in jail. Here, this one here. And these people, these people advise prominent politicians, businessmen, sports figures. And they also are known to bribe people. Now the ones that Kushner involved with, they're descended from the Baba Sali himself. We're talking about the Moroccan mystical rabbi Baba Sali himself. Now here's, I think this is his great-grandson. This is the one that was put in jail over in Israel for trying to bribe police officers. I'm pretty sure that he's related to the, the uh, Rabbi Pinto that Kushner's go to, that's on the Kushner's payroll. Now this guy here, he... he, he um, he advises the sports figures because if you're going to make $7 million, remember who owns the basketball team. If, you, if they own the basketball team, you work for them. They will tell you, oh, we would like you to see our mystical Moroccan rabbi. He will help you with all your problems. That's the owner of the basketball team. What are you going to do? Tell him no? You work for the owner. You'll do exactly what they tell you to do if you want that $7 million. They're descended from this man. His name is... Baba Sali, he was born in 1889, died in 1984. He is their mystical Moroccan prophet. He was known to actually work miracles through his prayers and his thoughts of the numbers. So I'm telling you this, they believe this shit unconditionally. So it doesn't matter whether you believe what Baba Sali thought. It doesn't matter whether you believe what Rabbi Pinto, Rabbi Pinto is a descendant of this man, Moroccan mystics, that prayer to the numbers, they work, myst they work miracles through the power of belief. It doesn't matter whether you believe it. They believe it, and they control your dollar bill. They control the Federal Reserve note. They're laughing at you, but they study the numbers. 
And we've gone on. I beat this like a dead horse. I beat this horse so bad it's dead. And I'm done beating this dead horse. But I tell you, if you don't believe that they believe in the numbers, well, you need to reevaluate your thinking because your masters believe in these numbers and they believe in them unconditionally. Let's go on with the news. I hope you know that all the markets are under their control. Silver, gold, the stock market, they're in complete control of it. They're in control, they have back doors to the internet. Now, this is a flag pattern. Sometimes they even make the patterns. They're in so much control. I mean, the price of silver is a lot, in, in real terms, the price of silver is a lot higher than that. That's the number they want you to believe silver is. What I want you to know is that it's a flag pattern. That flag pattern means that they are probably going to take it up higher. They're also throwing people in jail under a profile. They're profiling you, and if they profile you to be dangerous, they're throwing you in jail. These are our masters. These are the people who are in complete control of all the markets. And Kathy Griffin, they're still talking about her early in the morning. She says, Donald Trump is ruining my life. Donald Trump broke me. This was her early in the morning. Apparently, she got a few drinks under her belt. She started feeling a little better, and she said, Oh no, oh no, Donald Trump's messing with the wrong redhead. Yeah, this is how these Hollywood types are. You know, they're kind of like bipolar, or if they're not drinking, they get their medication. And now she's finally got some, she got some, you know what going on there. And she said, hey, Donald Trump's messing with the wrong redhead. Who knows how she'll feel tomorrow morning. But the bottom line is she went, she went too far. And CNN fired her. A lot of people fired her. And she's going to be in a doghouse for a while. Because nobody asked her to do such a shocking thing. I mean, look at that. That was shocking. Can you imagine if that was Obama's? Flip it around. It's not Donald Trump's head. It's Obama. People would have freaked out. But all this, because it's Donald Trump. Because it's a Gentile. Because it's a Caucasian. Because it's one of us. It's okay. They get away with it. If you do a Google on Donald Trump, today is 366 million results in 0.62 seconds. They're still talking about Trump withdrawing, withdrawing from the Paris Accord. Another story is that there's more, two dozen more ethics waivers coming. Donald Trump's going to have to give everybody in the White House a waiver to keep them around. The Democrats are warning Trump not to block Comey's testimony. Apparently, the White House thinks that because they're the executive branch, that they may have executive powers to block Comey's testimony. The Democrats are warning them not to do it. The FBI apparently is still investigating Jared Kushner's meeting with the banker who is tied to Putin, apparently KGB trained. Just go down and, uh, yes, I agree. Jared Kushner is the slimiest of the slimiest of all the slumlords. I mean, he, he is a slum. That's what really confuses me with Donald Trump. Is he really that stupid to bring in a 36-year-old slumlord as an advisor? I mean, I think we talked about that before. It's maybe not Donald Trump's not that stupid that his blind love for Ivanka made him do it. So we'll just keep on looking for some news. Kushner has some explaining to do on the Russian Federation. These people, these people don't have to explain anything, okay? All they do is they go to their rabbi. They talk about the numbers, and the rabbi takes care of it all. Now this story, you may not believe it ties into anything, but I think it does when we're talking about the Moroccan rabbis. They've done some DNA testing on some of the ancient Egyptians. And it turns out that their bloodline goes to the Middle Eastern people. Or you could call them Mediterraneans. Many people thought it was the Greeks. The Greeks, the Italians, the Bedouins, the Arabic, the Semitic people. They're all one group of subgroup of Caucasian. We've all known this. If you study the pictures of the rulers in Egypt, we all knew that they were a Mediterranean type people. A Bedouin, a Greek uh, Semitic type people. We all knew this. Everybody. But there was also, you know, there's always a lot of public uh, p 
PR going on out there trying to manipulate the public. But the fact is, if you study people, if you, if you study the Nordic and the Celtic and the Mediterranean groups of the Caucasian people, we don't need DNA to tell us who's in charge. That's why there's profiling. That's why there's FBI profiling. That's why we study the tribes. Because when we can identify people, we can put them in categories. And yes, back then, the, you know, there was like a 6 to 10% you know, sub-Saharan bloodline in there. And look, look at the picture there of the quarterback there, that quarterback compared to the ancient picture of an Egyptian. They did the same thing with Obama. Obama went in there to Egypt and they found a, a painting on the wall that was similar to Obama. That just tells you that there's a, there was some uh, sub-Saharan bloodline going through there. We are a mix of people. But remember this, Baba Sali and his people Rabbi Pinto, his people go back thousands of years back there. They were traders of assets, traders of silver and gold. The, don't, do not underestimate your opponent. Our opponent is a worthy opponent. They control our money. We are, we are underneath them now. If you're going to get back on top, you cannot underestimate your opponent. Your opponent has been doing this for thousands of years. They've been battling things. And they've been using the numbers all the time. So that's why I say June 25th is coming up. Now, we're talking about it, so hopefully Donald Trump won't do anything stupid. We know they listen to us. But let's hope that on June 25th, Donald Trump and his handlers don't do anything stupid. But you just never know with these people. They go over the numbers with their rabbis. And then... And then they put the dominoes in motion. But guess who gets their fingernails dirty? Guess who gets their hands dirty? You and I, the Gentiles. Not them, you see. They keep their hands clean. They go to the rabbi. They do the figuring in their heads. They get the numbers down. They go to the Upper West Side cocktail parties. They are above us, supremacist. We are trash to them. We do their work. And if, you're, and if you like that, if you like that, then keep on doing what you're doing. Watch the Kardashians, watch the football games, the basketball games, and you go ahead with your life if you like to be underneath them. But if you are a real Gentile, if you want to pray to the God of the Gentiles, maybe one day we can take our country back. I don't know, I'm not going to go off on a rant here. But these people... They feel far superior to us because they control the money. Because they push a button and they can have $10 million, they feel superior to us. CNN even t calls Ivanka the most powerful Jewish woman in the world, even though, you know, your mother has to be Jewish to be Jewish. What do we know? Maybe, maybe she's a cryptic. Maybe, maybe her mother was Jewish. I mean, these people don't tell you the truth. They don't tell But we know one thing. Ivanka's political brand is dead in the water. They've made way too many mistakes. They were in way over their head. They were too young. You probably already heard of this story, uh, of course, the Manila attack. Kind of strange and suspicious. I have my doubts about this story. They got one guy comes in, he sets the casino tables on fire, and then he sets himself on fire. We don't have any really good pictures, and we know that when you walk into a casino, they've got really nice cameras on you. They have facial cameras. When you walk in, if you don't have a nice big hat on with glasses, they have a facial analysis program already on you when you walk in the casino, if you didn't know. Sean Spicer, do a Google on him, there's 30 million results. He's a very popular guy, but apparently he's not in the loop anymore. Does he know anything? They're trying to replace him, but theres I don't know if they can get anybody to replace him. They're making fun of him. But 30 million results, you know, he's, people like Sean Spicer. He's a likable fella, even though he's double-dipping. Let's go in. We're going to wind this segment down looking for some interesting news. Kathy Griffin, I mean, she's not getting any sympathy from anybody after what she did. I don't know why she's trying Donald Trump is still searching for an FBI chief, supposedly, and it's a chaotic affair. <laughs> yeah, we know that Donald Trump will not be picking the FBI director. His masters will be, the, the dual citizens, the people in charge will be picking the FBI director. We've already talked about LeBron James and who he goes to get his advice from, Rabbi Pinto. Yes, 
Rabbi Pinto, he advises all of them. If you work for them, if you work for a sports team and you make $7 million, you will do what your owner tells you to do. And if the owner says you will go talk to Rabbi Pinto, you will do it. What are you going to do? You're going to tell the owner no? No. You go there, you sit with the rabbi, and you do exactly what the rabbi tells you to do. Just like Jared Kushner and just like Donald Trump. So we'll continue to look for some interesting news. I don't know if you knew, know this. Today's uh, June 2nd. Yesterday was June 1st. I should have done this story yesterday. Yesterday was June 1st. Add it up to 7. It was also day 133 in the Donald Trump White House regime. That was yesterday. 133 adds up to 7. So doing the uh, 777 video would have been good yesterday. But hey, better late. A day late and a dollar short. The Uber driver... Fatally stabbed by a teenager in Chicago. Uber. So um, we'll just keep on looking for some interesting news. Uh, this is pretty interesting that the Kushners, Ivanka Trump and Kushner, live right around the corner from the president, the ex-president Obama. And he's buying his house. He was renting the mansion, but now he's going to buy the mansion for $8.1 million. You know that he's basically overseas in Europe and on the tropical islands most of the time. But he's going to buy the mansion because, you know, Valerie Jarrett's going to live there and she's going to need Secret Service protection. So anyhow, he's buying his mansion for $8.1 million. Valerie Jarrett will have her home base there, Secret Service protection, while the Obamas are out doing their world tours, all the globalists putting them up, and all the mansions around the world, the globalists are going to take care of the Obamas, trust me. Tiger Woods was very confused, stumbling, could hardly stay awake when he was arrested. Sounds like some, you know, some sort of drugs, you know, even if they could have been over, uh, could have been prescription drugs, even maybe, you know, even with a dash of alcohol can really do damage to you. So again, nobody, nobody wants to work for Donald Trump. They say he's crazy. I think it might have more to do with this Russian investigation. People, why would they want to go there if it's a 50-50 chance that he's impeached? So people really want to know that there's some stability. If they're going to walk into that hostile of an environment, they want to know there's some stability. People don't want to be there for a month and then have to leave. This is a one big airplane that airplane is going to be able to take missiles up and then they shoot the missiles off up into the outer altitudes. Now, this is interesting. Joe Biden is announcing a political action committee for 2020. So I believe it really bothered Joe Biden that he stepped aside for Hillary Clinton. See, Joe Biden did not have the right advisors. If Joe Biden would have had the right advisors, they would have told him, Hillary Clinton cannot win. You need to jump in there. Joe Biden would be the president today if he had the right advisors. Now, the problem with Joe Biden is he doesn't really understand the nationalist theme, and the, the nationalist agenda. Everybody going forward is going to have to understand the nationalist agenda. Like So Biden's going to need an advisor like Steve Bannon or somebody who understands it. And if you don't understand climate control, Americans don't give a shit about climate change and climate control and taxing us. Americans don't give a shit about that. The only thing Donald Trump's done right lately. If Joe Biden can't get that through his thick head, if Joe Biden cannot understand the nationalist movement, he might as well give up. He cannot win. So... I'll leave you with some further proof that the your rulers, the Illuminati, the elites, they like that number 777. When they come out with EPA officials who went against Trump, there just happened to be 777 of them. Yes. Templars. I mean, do a... You may not believe me. Do a research on New World Order, Illuminati, your masters in 7-Eleven. You will be flabbergasted how much they put into that number. And then if you want to be a farmer, it doesn't surprise me that even on a state question 777, the right to farm. What? Americans don't even have the right to farm anymore? 
Then, and they're going to put that on question 777. These people are insane. These, these Illuminati have gone too far. The, the elites, the dual citizens, they've gone too far. Let's hope that the next, let's hope that we can find a real Gentile who can run. Well, I don't have any hope. I have no hope that we have any leaders that will stand up to these people. Quite frankly, there's going to have to be a collapse. The only way we take our country back is if there's a collapse. And out of the, out of the ashes will come a leader. Out of the ashes. That's, I believe that to be true.